Hi everybody, Senator Liz Bolden here coming to you from my car on this Sunday. I am between events today, so I thought I would take this opportunity to share a recap of last week. I'm gonna run through the bills that I had heard in committee, um, 11 bills heard last week, uh, and talk about a couple things that happened on the floor, and then I'll tell you about my events that I have happening this weekend. So um, last week, uh, bills that I had heard in committee, what just things that I am working on for you to be aware of. Um, on Monday, I had two bills heard in committee. One was Senate File 999, which was around um, ensuring that new public buildings that are constructed are constructed with adult changing facilities included. And this is an important um, provision and really important for our friends and neighbors and folks in our communities with disabilities. Um, and then Senate File 1567 is around PCA services and allowing parents who are providing PCA services for their children to be able to reimburse to be reimbursed uh, and paid for more of those hours. It doesn't expand the allowable hours for anybody. It just says that the parents who are already doing this work are able to be um, paid for more of those hours. On Tuesday, I had two bills. I'm referencing my notes here. Uh, 2269, which is a bill about labor trafficking and um, funding organizations who are doing critical work in this space um, on an issue that is, it is happening in our state and um, and we should be taking action on. And then Senate File 2732, I was heard in elections, it's around electioneering, which is um, work on the communications that happen in the um, short time 30 days before an election. And this really is around transparency uh, for Minnesotans to know who is spending money to try to influence our vote. Um, on Wednesday, I had a uh, Senate file 2122 heard in HHS. This uh, was a bill brought um, uh, by the agency uh, working with me on this around hospital standards and sort of building codes related to hospitals. Uh, on Thursday, I had two bills heard, uh, 2214, which was a housing bill, um, which had a number of provisions, but it is, um, uh, one is to put funds into homeownership and making um, homeownership possible for more people, um, helping folks uh, with uh, resources to do that. And then um, also um, uh, funding to expand um, and increase our housing supply because we know that is a piece of the of the housing crisis is we just do not have the supply of homes that we need in the state. Um, and then 2605 was a bill uh, that was heard uh, in the Legacy Committee to um, request funding for the Stapple Farm, which is uh, in Olmstead County uh, in the Historical Society, um, a, a resource, a, a great uh, location, a, a great piece of history, um, and we are wanting to restore that. So looking for some state funding with that. And then on Friday, four bills heard in HHS. 782, which is a bill for uh, expansion of what is um, provided for dental care for folks on medical assistance. Um, currently, um, there's a different level of uh, what is um, supported or what is um, paid for for uh, pregnant folks and children versus adults who are not pregnant and this would um, restore those benefits so that everybody um, gets that higher level of benefits. And then Senate File 1008 is also around dental. Um, it provides uh, or requests um, additional um, resources and funding for critical access dental providers. And so we know um, there are folks across the state who don't have access to dental care and dental care is a part of health care, which everyone deserves health care. And so um, just bringing more resources so more folks have access to dental care. And 2606, which is an early childhood apprenticeship program. Uh, the goal of that is to bring more folks into early childhood um, the work um, and that apprentice program being um, a, a way to do that and, and bring people in. Lastly, last but not least, uh, 2773, uh, which is around um, charity care in uh, the healthcare space. So it, what it says is that hospitals, before they um, send people's medical debt to you know collections or before they sue people for that, um, it requires them to screen people. So if people come into the hospital, they will be, if they don't have insurance, they will be screened to see if they are eligible for um, medical assistance or other public programs. 
and if they're not eligible to be covered for insurance, they the hospital has to screen them for um, to see if they're eligible for charity care. And so, you know, we know that medical debt is a huge problem uh, across our state, across the country. Uh, medical debt is the number one for people to. Um, uh, declare bankruptcy, uh, which is wrong. Um, and so this is a one um, provision, one mechanism to, to decrease that medical debt and ensure that people are getting the care that they need. So lots of bills heard in committee. Um, I'm grateful to um, staff who are helping with all of that and the advocates who are helping with that. And so um, lots of work happening. Also, just a note, things that happened on the floor this week uh, in the Senate, we passed universal school meals. So starting uh, Monday, I believe, as the bill was signed into law on Friday, um, every kiddo in Minnesota will get a free breakfast and a free lunch. And this is going to make a huge difference for families across the state. Um, if you have time, go take a look at some of the pictures from the bill signing on Friday. They're fantastic. Um, kiddos are really excited about this and as they should be families are too. The other thing uh, that happened on the floor in the Senate this week is the bonding bill did not get passed. Um, and so a bonding bill is a bill around projects and infrastructure. And, um, you know, these are projects that are shovel ready uh, in many areas of the state, all four corners of the state, um, including um, projects that were included just right here in our community in our district as well. Um, a bonding bill uh, requires a supermajority of votes to pass, and so um, just having all the the DFL, the 34 DFL votes, was not enough to pass that. We needed Republican votes as well. Um, did not have those, and so that bill did not pass. Those projects are not going to be starting. Um, really, really disappointing um, for the folks across the state who are, you know, were counting on that, relying on that to get these projects started. Um, you know, we heard, I'm getting calls in my office from um, not in our district, but uh, other places in the state where they've been drinking bottled water for a year and a half. And they were counting on this bill um, to do the work to be sure that they have drinkable water. And now that is not going to happen. So, um, you know, we'll keep working at that to, to see if um, what we can do, we may put together a cash bill um, to be able to get these projects done, but disappointing for sure. Um, so what have I been up to this weekend? Um, yesterday, uh, delivered Meals on Wheels. Shout out to uh, Family Service Rochester for a wonderful service they uh, you know, provide and coordinate in our community to be sure that seniors uh, have the food that they need. Um, and today I just came from a democracy town hall hosted by uh, a number of um, Advocacy, advocacy groups in our community around democracy. And we talked about Senate file three, um, some ranked choice voting, um, and took some questions from the audience, really great questions. So uh, really grateful to be able to connect with people in that way. And I now I'm on my way um, to another event around ranked choice voting. And so grateful to have conversations uh, with those in our community around that. So that's a lot. There's a lot happening. Um, I will be back on at the end of next week to sort of talk about the another week in review. But if you have questions, reach out anytime uh, and we will see you soon. Thanks. Have a good week. Bye bye.